If you just picked up a microphone and you want it to sound good, no matter if you're recording a podcast, you're doing a Facebook Live, or just doing meetings on Zoom, you are in the right place. Because in this video, we're gonna help you get the best audio possible out of your microphone, no matter what microphone you're using. Here we go. So the first thing you need to know is whether you're using a dynamic or a condenser microphone. So over here we have condenser microphone land, and over here is dynamic microphone land. And the big difference is simply how they are designed to capture your voice. So a condenser microphone is constantly powered and is looking for your voice. So they're gonna be positioned a little bit farther back from your mouth as you're recording them, but they will pick up some more background noise, which is not really a problem if you're just using them for Zoom, but if you want something for a voiceover recording or podcast, there may not be the best choice. Now, dynamic microphones are the exact opposite. Rather than always looking for your voice, they only record when they sense sound waves coming into the microphone capsule, which makes them very forgiving for podcasting and voiceover applications. So if that's what you're looking for, you'll probably wanna to lean towards a dynamic microphone. So regardless of what you have right now, just know whether your microphone is a condenser or a dynamic because the advice will be slightly different. So if you still have the box, check the box to see if it tells you if it's a condenser or a dynamic microphone. And if it doesn't, you can simply Google whatever microphone you're using Ask the internet if it's a condenser or a dynamic microphone and you'll get the answer. So now let's jump into some practical things that you can do if you are recording using a condenser microphone. And for that, we're gonna be using the Blue Yeti, but know that all the advice and the tips that we're giving concerning the Blue Yeti also apply to other condenser microphones. Tip number one is to make sure that you're recording in a quiet environment. The Blue Yeti is particularly sensitive to background noises and over excessive reverb. So you're gonna wanna record in a room with carpet, with curtains covering the windows, and with a lot of stuff, couches, chairs, desks. Think your teenager's bedroom before they've cleaned it for inspection. That's what you're looking for in an ideal scenario because again, it is pretty sensitive to background noise and echo. So if you're recording in an office or a conference room and there's nothing in there except you, the microphone and the table, you're gonna get a lot of echo. So. First thing to do is make sure that you're recording in an environment that doesn't have a lot of echo in it. The second thing that you wanna make sure you do is make sure you're recording at a proper distance from your microphone. If you're too far away, you're gonna pick up all that background noise and reverb that we just got rid of with the first thing. So the magic sweet spot is about two hand widths away. That would be the sweet spot if you're looking for optimal audio quality. Now, if you're doing a Zoom meeting and you don't want your microphone in the frame, you can certainly push it back a little bit. Just know that the farther away it is from you, the less clear it's going to be. Do some audio tests, play around with placement on your desk, on your table, and see what sounds the best and go from there. If you're gonna be recording for podcasting applications or settings where you're gonna be closer to the microphone, you will want to get a pop filter foam cover, they all do the same thing. Essentially, it protects the microphone capsule from picking up harsh plosives, P's and S sounds that tend to sound overdone in audio recording settings. So you can get something like this, mount it to the table, put it in front of the Blue Yeti, and that's gonna take care of a lot of those harsh plosives. Now that we've covered condenser, let's jump into dynamic microphones. So we're gonna go through all the things that you can do to get great audio quality out of the Q2U. But just know that everything we're talking about with the Q2U absolutely applies to the pod mic, the Shure SM7B, and every other dynamic microphone out there. Tip number one is bring the front of the microphone to within four finger widths away from your mouth. This is a, <laughs> this is a lighter microphone. Bring the microphone pretty close to your mouth. So you can see that I've readjusted it on the boom arm to be within four finger widths from my mouth. And that's simply because it's designed to record what's directly in front of the microphone and not pick up so much of the background noise, which is what you want, right? So that will probably mean at some point in the future, you'll wanna upgrade the stand that comes with the QTU for a boom arm, like the one that I'm using, or get a nice stack of textbooks or an Amazon box or something to bring the microphone up so you can position it pretty close to your mouth. The second thing you can do to make sure you maximize your audio quality is to make sure that you're recording 
off axis. So that simply means instead of talking directly into the microphone and giving the full force of all of your voice, which is great, I'm sure you sound wonderful, you want it to be kind of pointed at the corner of your mouth. So that allows you to talk past the microphone and redirect some of the airflow away from the microphone capsule itself. And that, in addition to the pop filter, is really gonna kill any plosives that you have. So if talking directly into the microphone, you're saying bears, beats, Battlestar Galactica, you can still probably pick up some of those B sounds pretty prominently. But if I talk this way and do the same thing, bears, beats, Battlestar Galactica, it sounds better simply because you have reoriented your mouth. It's still crystal clear, still sounds great, but that small tweak is gonna do a world of good for your audio. So before we wrap up this video, I also just wanna give some general tips that are gonna be applicable no matter what kind of microphone that you are using. The first one being if your audio is too loud or too soft. Chances are you need to change the input gain from your microphone, essentially how loud is the microphone as you're recording it. If you're using something like a Blue Yeti, they have gain knobs on the back of these microphones and a lot of microphones have similar features. So check to see if your microphone has the ability to adjust your input volume on the mic itself. If not, you're going to wanna go into your system preferences, or your audio preferences and settings and whatever software you're using to record and adjust your input volume there. The other thing to be aware of is that if you're recording a podcast, let's say, and you have multiple people and multiple microphones in the same room, you're gonna get something called microphone bleed or spill, where you're able to hear your audio and the other person's microphone and vice versa. It's not something that you're gonna be able to eliminate completely, but dynamic microphones are much better at reducing that microphone bleed and spill than condenser microphones, simply because of the way that they record audio. So if you're trying to do a podcast with multiple people, make sure that you jump for a dynamic microphone rather than a condenser microphone. And then as a final pro tip, if you really wanna go all in to get the best audio possible and you're not doing video and it doesn't matter how it looks, get creative about how you reduce echo. So we're talking pillow forts, we're talking moving blanket tents, things you can do to create a small tiny space that doesn't have any echo to get super crisp audio. It may look ridiculous, but as long as you get good audio, that's kind of the whole point. Now, if you wanna know the microphone that we recommend specifically for podcasters that are just getting started, you'll want to go and watch the video Albin did on the best microphones under $100. It's gonna give you the exact microphone we recommend and why. It's actually on the table in this shot right now, but I'm not gonna tell you which one it is. You have to go watch the video for that. So you can click the link below in the video description or this preview that just popped up on the screen. You can click that too and watch that video next. Well, thanks for watching this one and we'll catch you in the next one. Keep podcasting.